Tammy and her daughter Miranda know a good song when they hear it. They're talent buyers, coordinating about 100 live music performances a week across Austin and San Antonio. They also know that when it comes to the soundtrack of your life, you don't get to pick all the songs, but you do have to stand up and sing them as best you can, even the really scary ones. In 1996, Tammy Miranda Green, a 35-year-old mother of three, was taken to a hospital near her New York home after a car crash. Routine blood tests showed elevated liver enzymes. After more tests, specialists in Manhattan diagnosed her with autoimmune hepatitis and lupus. And they said I had five to ten years to transplant or death and that I could treat or not treat. That's because treatment can be difficult and the disease progression slow. Often patients go 10 to 25 years before they truly get ill to the point where they feel terrible. She agreed to steroids taken in high doses. But the prednisone was really kicked my butt. Her daughter Miranda was about 10 years old. It was hard to be young and not understand the, the side effects of that drug. I mean one time I waxed off an eyebrow, I colored my hair like a blueberry color. I mean, I've done some crazy things on prednisone, not having any clue. There were times when I would just sit kind of with her during an episode. Tammy's family felt helpless. There's nothing really you can do. There's just so much family can do with a disease like that. Tammy wasn't ready to accept a life like this either. I flew to the Mayo Clinic in Minnesota and I met with Al Chaya, who is He's the man who wrote the studies on autoimmune hepatitis, and he's the guy who told me at that visit that I had um, the overlap disorder with primary biliary cirrhosis. Basically, he told her that her immune system was attacking her esophagus, gallbladder, and blood vessels, as well as her liver. Different autoimmune diseases, uh, to some degree, can affect most of the tissues in your body. I was choking on food. My symptoms of my esophagus disorder was a whole lot worse than my, my liver disease. The doctor at Mayo stopped the prednisone. So I was at Medical Mount Sinai in Manhattan. I went to the Mayo Clinic, Houston, San Antonio, Baylor in Dallas, all over the place. I didn't believe it at first. She was definitely an interesting case. I, I'm not sure the exact numbers, but I've heard like one in 25 million because I have quite a few overlap disorders. Tammy's oldest daughter, Shannon, had already moved away, and her son, Justin, was a busy teenager. So Miranda went to every appointment, learned every medication. They made fun of me today about being bossy, because I kind of became the mother. They moved to Austin. Tammy's ex-husband, her sisters, her son. They all wanted to be her donor. The liver anatomy allows you to typically donate either 40 or 60 percent of the liver, one lobe or the other. Oh, I totally wanted to do it and get it over with. I wanted her to be well way before, you know, she got as sick as she did. But Tammy kept saying no. She didn't want anyone to put their life at risk for her. Well, she was afraid that if anything happened to me that she wouldn't be able to live with herself. Years went by. The first real sign her liver was failing was fatigue. It would be early in the afternoon and I would feel like I wanted to go to sleep. Even as her symptoms worsened, she continued to put together music shows. The support was amazing. A manager of her club offered to be her donor. And actually talked to his family and went to be tested. But he was confused because he thought I needed a kidney. <laughs> and when her Cobra coverage ran out, a Canadian musician offered to marry her. So I would have his Canadian insurance because I was struggling so much trying to get insurance. and. I thanked him, but I didn't marry him <laughs> for Canadian insurance. Because she couldn't get covered in Texas, she decided to move to Maui, where she could get coverage, get listed for a donated liver, and live close to her daughter, Shannon. The music world rallied around her. Fran Cosmo and Anton Cosmo of Boston flew in and played a, a fundraiser for me. My family helped do all kinds of work. Tammy made the move. Miranda had to stay behind. That was really hard. I actually, um, again, a little bit of a bossy purchase. I wrote a manual for my sister of what to 
um, look for and what to expect. And if this happens, do this. If this happens, call this person. You know, uh, send me photos if her eyes are looking extra yellow. But I traveled back and forth several times. Um, pretty much every time she was admitted to a hospital, I was on a plane within the same day. Hawaii was no paradise for Tammy. It was awful living like that, worrying all the time, nightmares all the time. Never knew what was happening next. The hospital there did very few deceased donor liver transplants, and like the majority of the transplant programs, it did not offer a living donation option. Living donor operation is technically much more complex uh, than a standard liver transplant, which is also somewhat complex. She was losing hope. I missed a lot, and finally I just decided, you know what, I'm going back. Even though her doctor in Hawaii told her it was too dangerous to fly, she did it anyway. I flew. <laughs> I definitely blew up big time because I had such a bad problem with um, retaining water. Back in Texas, she moved in with her sister while Miranda and her fiancé Jeff renovated their home. When it was ready, I moved into Miranda and Jeff's and they basically took care of me. I went downhill pretty fast. She'd done research online and found University Transplant Center in San Antonio, the only center in South Texas that performs living liver donation. She self-referred. She had been encephalopathic, which is when you're confused because of the toxins that build up in your blood. She had had bleeding from dilated veins in her stomach related to her liver disease, and she had a lot of fluid in her abdomen. But he was hopeful. Liver transplant surgeons are optimists. We um, usually think we can help somebody in liver failure. So they put her on the waiting list, but time was critical. Without a transplant, Tammy would not have lived. Living liver donation is still not very common. University transplant performed just eight in 2015. Under the right circumstances, Dr. Health says it's a good option. We talk to people frequently about living donation. I am. Personally, I think living donation is one of the most beautiful things a person can give to another person. My brother was being evaluated here. For some reason, he wasn't a great match. But taking care of Tammy had always been her job. I, I always thought from a, a young age, and, it, and this wasn't great that I thought this, but it was my job to save her, and I didn't know what. <laughs> I didn't, I didn't always know what that meant because um, I never thought that I could actually be a donor. In Hawaii, she'd been told she was too small to donate. She found out here that was not correct. It's based on the size of the potential part of the liver. It's based on being sure that the donor is very healthy and that we've minimized every risk possible. You know, I was kind of like, so out of it. I mean, I was happy. And I look back now and I can't believe that I was happy. You know, but that's how skewed my mind was. I'm thinking, oh, yay, Miranda's going to do it. Now I look back and I think, oh, my God, if I was in my right mind, I never would have let her go through that. It's our job as physicians to help patients go into this with their eyes open. And it's very important to me that they truly feel that they're informed about what they're going to go through, about what the risks are because there is a risk of dying, even though it's not large. And there certainly is a tremendous risk of pain or having some significant complication. The process started with a questionnaire. And then once they knew I was healthy enough, they called me and said that I could do it. And of course, every step of the way told me that I could back out or I could change my mind and not to worry. She obviously had a wonderful attitude and in terms of the anatomy and all the other issues we look at health, she was an outstanding person to donate. Her eyes were extremely yellow. Her skin was very yellow. The, her ammonia level was so high that I would catch her in the middle of the night just in a random room kind of staring off. We, we were all over at the house a lot. When she would be, when she would have episodes of, you know, issues, symptoms. So we were all pretty worried. Clearly, Tammy would not live much longer without a new liver. But Miranda knew this would not be easy. I was terrified. I never had surgery before in my life. Finally, it was time. Tammy was crying. Miranda was crying. First, when we were apart, I 
was crying a lot because <laughs> I was so scared and I didn't want her to see me crying. Hearing later on how scared Miranda was, it's hard to hear because I, I didn't know. When they wheeled me over to her, I tried really hard to be like, everything is great. And mom had already had a little bit of medication, so everything was really great for her. And she was very excited <laughs> about the whole situation. Both operations went according to plan, and Miranda's recovery went as well as expected. You know, I needed help with walking and getting up and getting down. She had a lot of pain, but youth and good health was on her side. Dr. Washburn called her super donor. <laughs> he was like, you're the healthiest person we've ever seen. Tammy remained in the hospital for several weeks. She was struggling. Miranda couldn't be there, but she called a lot. Just try to, you know, remind her to, to be positive and, you know, I would joke, say, well, I'm going to take it back. One of the miracles of living liver transplantation is that both sections grow pretty quickly. If we put 60% of the liver in a patient, the liver regenerates, both the donor and the recipient. So within a month to nine months, the liver grows back to about 90% of the original volume. Yeah, it's grown. It's perfectly healthy. I have no problems. I have one bile duct and it seems to work great. Tammy was in and out of the hospital several times for the first year. But it was pretty rough. It was hard after I had several surgeries and procedures since that transplant. And so it's been a long year, but I'm better now. The best day was June 12, 2015, the day Miranda and Jeff were married. I was very emotional at that wedding because I could not believe that I was there. Miranda looked beautiful. I've never seen her more radiant and she was, it was quite a day. And then I was in the hospital two weeks after her wedding for another week because I developed pneumonia. Miranda has always been there. My daughter knows everything, every medication I've ever taken, every procedure I've ever had every name of every illness, everything. She has missed nothing, ever. She's been there every time. I could not have done this without her. It took her ammonia level being in the 200s and her being a little <laughs> to let me do it, so. <laughs> Tammy's rediscovering what it means to wake up in the morning and feel well. I still am afraid all the time. I, like, I haven't caught up to the fact that I'm healthy and. That's what I'm working on. I'm trying to remember every day that I'm not sick anymore. She spent the majority of my life expecting to die. And so now she needs to live like she's going to live. I have a lot of respect for Tammy. She took care of herself. She did everything she needed to do in terms of treatment. Tammy is so grateful to Dr. Half and the entire University Transplant Center team. We have very good outcomes, which is why we continue to do what we do, but it's because we have a very large team um, of highly competent, wonderful people. Really super cool to see how, you know, you really become friendly with these doctors. They really do care about you. It's like a family. And Having had both of them as patients uh, makes me feel good about my career and good about what I do. Having a living liver donation program takes tremendous commitment and expensive resources. University Hospital is a unique setting. It's truly what allows us to do the incredibly complex operations and the complex care that we provide. Dr. Half and his team will continue to be here to help keep Tammy healthy. Her long-term chances of doing well are very good at this point in time. Her liver function's good. Uh, she's healthier than she's been for a long time and so I'm optimistic that she'll do well for many years. The University Transplant Team will follow her for the rest of her life in partnership with Dr. Jennifer Wells at the Austin location of the Texas Liver Institute. Uh, we'll get labs monthly and eventually as she continues to improve she'll need less and less of our services. Ultimately there are no eating restrictions, no exercise restrictions, our whole goal is that people go back to as close to a normal life as possible. In the year after their procedures, Miranda learned she was expecting her first child. It's been a truly joyous time with her husband, Jeff, and she's had no complications with the pregnancy. It's a girl, and they will call her Violet. 
Tammy's been on a cruise with her sisters. She went to Maui for fun this time and visited her grandmother. She's living alone for the first time in many years. I love it, just me and my little Coco, my little puppy, live in my little apartment and I have my car and I can drive and you know, little by little I'm going outside of my box and learning how to get places and trying to do more and more and more without help. I know it was very hard emotionally, but seeing her a year after the operation, a year and a half after the operation was like looking at a different person. And seeing Miranda get married and have a child is very rewarding. She um, hates to be called a hero, so she's not a hero. <laughs> I won't say that, even though she is my hero. She can't wait to watch Miranda be a mom. Miranda's whole life, she's been a caregiver for me. There's no doubt in my mind that she is going to be the best parent ever. That child is very lucky. And there's nothing I wouldn't do for them. And they're on a mission to raise awareness for organ donation. I'm happy that we're raising awareness, and I want people to learn about the story and about, you know, what it means to be a living donor or to just be a donor in general. But. I wish I could do that without the added praise because it does make me uncomfortable. Um, I'd rather them focus on mom. I mean, she's the medical miracle that this woman has survived. She, has, she should not be alive. <laughs> People need to be educated and make the decision. Everybody should be forced to make the decision. And I don't care if half of America decides not to be a donor. The other half will, and 4,000 people a year aren't going to be dying, waiting for a transplant that never comes to be, because there just aren't enough Mirandas. The song for life, sing it. The gift of love, give it.